Good morning folks, starting the vlog off at home this morning. I uh, thought I'd put a different tack on it because generally I've thought the past couple of days I haven't had much luck really have I? With uh, you know knocking walls down, failing to start the chainsaw and whatnot. So uh, different tack on today. So we're going to jump in the car, shoot down to the brewery, pay the wages, all that kind of usual stuff we have to do on a Friday. And then uh, we're going to take a view as to what job we're going to do next. So yesterday we never got chance to go in and review the work that I'd been doing on the pillars or the piers as they're called. So let's go in and have a look at how these extra footings have cured. I think we'll be ready to take the shutterings away. A little bit of litter in here, look, someone must have been doing a quiz. So, this is what we've decided to go for. That should have set by now. Yeah, it has. Oh, look at that. Look at that, folks. There we go. Problem solved, really, isn't it? So, we've come out a section with the, uh, with the footings. And then what we're going to do is put a couple of bricks this side like that, or a brick and a half, like that, and then start to build up, build up the wall from this side. So we've got a bit more of a substantial pier on both sides. Let's do the same thing here. It looks like it's just cracked a little bit, but it's only surface. Oh yeah, definitely. And I did actually dig dig these footings out pretty deep you can see we've already put some on this side as well yeah you can see how far down I've gone with that one and I've tried to underpin it as well to the existing concrete so my thoughts are that once it's all tied in and the brickwork sitting on it and uh, the piers are built then it'll be as good as we incorporated those extra footings into the build originally. So I'm confident that we found a solution, but also disappointed that I spent all day trying to fire up a goddamn chainsaw. Right then, honey. So one final coat on the events bar. It's coming along now. This, is this done now? No. Smooth as a baby's bum. Oh, splinter. No, only joking. <laughs> so, uh, people have been asking, will it fit in the van? Well, we know the van's got over three meter loading space and this is less than three meters because it fits inside the gazebo and the gazebo was indeed three meters square. So, yes, no problem. So we just need to get some of this stuff moved and tidied up and then uh, get it packed away and stowed onto the van. Stowed pipe. Choo -choo. That was wrong. That <laughs> was right folks, I'm gonna start cleaning a few casks. So I suppose it's the ideal time for me to show you our cast cleaning routine. And it gives me something for the vlog today. Hey, <laughs> everyone's a winner. So normally what we do is uh, the cask will arrive on site like this. It'll have a hard peg in the shive and a cork in the keystone, if indeed it's been tapped correctly. There are some different types of uh, extraction methods where they use vertical ale extractors instead of traditional cast taps, but we're not going to that here. I'll just turn that off a little minute while I'm talking. So normally what I do is pull out the cork, pull out the hard peg, and then I usually... Hello mate. Uh, bad time. No, you're all right. I was just about to. I'm just doing a video, like. 
Right, so as I was saying, uh, before we were interrupted, so I save, I generally tend to save the hard pegs and the corks and we'll just wash them and dry them out on the side. These are old ones, look, and they're only going in to empty casks. So, you know, it just saves a few pence here and there, recycling, doing your bit, eh, doing your bit. So we save them, they go back into the pub to be reused. And then we'll get the, uh, the old cask here. I just use a pretty sturdy screwdriver, being very careful not to scratch the steel on the inside of the keystone hole. And I just prise the keystone out like that. That goes in the bin. And then on this side, where we've got the shive, if you look back in the video history, you'll see that I made this tool, but you can buy them, just basically a de-shiving tool. Looks like an ice pick. And then I'll just stick that in the center of the shive hole. Again, being careful not to scratch the side of the hole. If you scratch the sides of these holes, then you cause the whole cask to leak. And we'll just prise it out like that. That goes in the bin. And then, if I just pan up a little bit, you'll see on the cask wash here. There we go. We've got one on there already, which has been rinsed. So that can come off. And then we basically get the slots on the cask washer, turn on the tap, there's a spray ball in there and that spray ball is going to rinse all the inside of the cask, get rid of most of the beer and yeast deposits, that goes to waste down the drain and uh, then all of the was washed casks will be piled over there and then the next job is to cycle through uh, caustic rinse and acid before we fill. So they all have a rinse first. They'll all get processed with de-shiving, de-keystone and rinse. And then they all come back to the other side and we go caustic, rinse, acid, fill. Folks, I am a sucker for punishment. Don't you know it? Yes. Back on the deck, of course, with everything in pieces. So we've got to try and get this carburetor back together. And uh, see if I can finally get a working. See, that feels better. I've cleaned this out completely. That went that way. Right, quit. And then I add a couple of different size screws in here. So that was up there. That was that one. That was that one. I'm not doing a very good. <laughs> not doing a very good job at framing this, am I? But basically, I'm trying to get this whole shebang back together. And uh, it has been quite a pitta. Pain in the ass. There we go. So we've got that one. I'm not tightening it down yet. That screw into there. Strange that they've made the screws on the base plate a bit longer. But say le V, c'est le V. So there we go. I think that now I've got all these in place. We'll put it back on to the machine and give it another crack at firing up. But I don't hold much hope. Uh, I just noticed quite a bit of resistance when I was pressing the priming button and that led me to believe that maybe there was a blockage in here we'll see let's get her back on and uh, give her a whirl well i'm delighted to say there's a little bit of smoke in the air 
because I don't let these in infernal confusion machines get the better of me. Chuffed. I've got that working anyway, but yeah, unfortunately there are people in the bloody beer garden again, so we ain't gonna be testing her out today. So I'm gonna. I've obviously shut these doors so the smoke's not gonna travel into the brewery. Got the back door open to air it out. I'm gonna go and get myself cleaned up, and I've got 12 casks of bitter to fill up now. Gemma's done pretty much all of the cask washing, bless her. Um, yeah, better crack on because it's one o'clock. Again, spent another hour pissing around with that, but we've cracked it. So I'm just sat in front of the casks, which I find is the best way to do this job. Uh, they're all washed and cleaned with acid. And they've also had, because this is our best bitter, they've had half a pint, or a pint should I say, of finings into each cask. 500 mil to be exact and then when we get to about that stage there I might be able to just zoom in and uh, show you exactly how full that cask is we pull the filling spear out let it drain and then simply move along to the next cask open the tap let that bad boy fill up on its own now and this one gets capped off. I don't prime any of the casks with any priming sugar and I tend not to stop the beers above their terminal gravity. Whatever they finish out at is what they go into the packaging at and because I've cold crushed it generally what happens is the beer will absorb a little bit of CO2 during the cold crushing stage so it's got enough carbonation in there to give it some condition when it goes on the bar. I've been doing it like this now for three years and not once have I had any issues. All I need to do now is get a big mallet and hit these shives in and uh, then there we go. That'll be the casks filled. It really is as simple as that. And I made this uh, filling uh, tool myself as well. It's got a big, oh thank God that's turned off. It's got a big uh, one inch BSP uh, lever valve here. And then it goes on to, uh, I think these are three quarter inch or one inch BSP um, cam locks. And I prefer the cam locks to any other fitting because uh, if you're transferring any fluids that might be a little bit dangerous like when I'm recirculating caustics or something you can lock these wings off with pins and uh, it won't come off them if you accidentally disconnect the levers. Can you imagine that pressurised with like acid or something and you pop that off and it's going to go everywhere and be a real big mess. And then all I got here was, uh, this is just a stock elbow from GC Supplies and uh, a little bit of one inch ID stainless tubing just welded onto a threaded nipple there and then I can remove all these components to replace them if I need to uh, or to give them a good soak in a caustic bath or something like that or get into them with a you know pop knob in fanny job what's it called a little brush and give them a good old clean up <laughs> Right, we've thrown the mobile bar, it's now mobile because it's on a van, uh, on the back of the van. It fits with room to spare, look. Uh, people fussing. Is it going to fit? Look how much room we've got. So we've got the remote chiller down this side. There's the keg font gone in. Can't get out that way now. <laughs> and, uh, and the hand pull. There we go, look, still got an old IVB sticker onto it. 
I don't remember when I had these printed. I stuck them all the way around Newark when we went over to Newark Beer Festival. A <laughs> uh, few beers to go on, still age. That's not the beer actually, the beer's still in the cold room. Uh, transformer, CO2 cylinder, kegs. Are you taking the gazebo? You are, aren't you? Yeah. Gazebo, kegs for people to sit on. And then Stu's just taken this off the van. This is some 12mm rebar that I've got for when we build those piers, the new piers. I'm going to be reinforcing them with rebar so that they don't fall over if anybody's leaning on the railings. I don't know why I didn't think of it before because then those smaller piers would have actually taken the strain because the rebar would have caused compression within the cement instead of expansion thus breaking it so you live and learn I don't like doing jobs twice as I keep saying so uh, yeah we're almost wrapped up now we've got all the casks taken out of FV1 so the best bitter is now done with I've taken all the ports off given them all a clean put them back on again so that's ready for cleaning place which uh, will be caustic and acid next week um, Everything's washed up. I just need to hose this uh, detergent down and away down the drain and rinse that bucket and then I think I can uh, call it Poets Day folks. Piss off early, tomorrow's Saturday. Well, we're now home folks. It is half past nine. I've showered, been out to the supermarket to pick up tonight's tea, which was it was a lovely piece of cod, but now, alas, that's in my belly. So I'm doing this because I can't remember if I signed out at the brewery or not. So if not, well, I'm signing out. We'll see you tomorrow.